This video is brought to you by the Deck of Mini and their Hecna 5E setting, launching on Kickstarter September 8th. Hello and welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. Today we're continuing our review series of the new wave of unpainted minis from WizKids that released in August 2020. Many thanks to WizKids for sending us these minis to review with you. Today we're looking at D&D's Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. But there are a lot of them, so we're breaking up our review into playable character miniatures and then everything else. The packaging used to distinguish between figures intended for player use and opponents for them to fight, but that isn't the case anymore. With so many races being playable now, those lines have been blurred. In any case, let's open these up and take a closer look. You get two figures in each playable character pack. This is our human sorcerer, and you'll notice that both sculpts depict the same person. One is dressed more elaborately than the other, with a more dramatic spell effect, and this is often the case with these packs. As your character grows and changes over the course of a campaign, you can swap figures to illustrate your character's progression. Otherwise, sometimes it's just cool to be able to change clothes. Here's our Elf Sorcerer. WizKids actually has an inventory of all their unpainted products on their website, which you can find at wizkids.com UPM for unpainted miniature. And the cool thing about the database is that it shows an example painted render of the figure, which we also show you in our reviews. Obviously, you can paint it however you like. That's the beauty of unpainted miniatures. But if you're at a loss for a color scheme to use, you can get an idea to start with. So here, the spell effect on the second figure is painted green, so it may be representing poison spray. But you could alternatively paint it red for fire, gray for smoke or darkness, purple for grape jam, and so forth. Whatever is appropriate for your character's spell list or lunch mishap. Here's the Dragonborn Paladin. Another thing to note is that the packaging for these figures doesn't specify whether the character presents as male or female. In most cases, it doesn't matter. You can either tell for yourself, or in the case of some races, such as the Dragonborn, there's not much physical distinction. However, some online stores do add a male or female label to their listing to help people search. In this case, the Dragonborn sculpt is identified as male. If you're wondering how to tell, Riley pointed out in the comments section of an earlier video that female Dragonborn are typically depicted in five E with longer hair. Here is our half-elf bard. There are 10 musical instruments a bard can choose from in the player's handbook, and this would correspond with the loot. There's also a set of magic items known as the Instrument of the Bards that bards can attune to, and in that list, there are four stringed instruments this sculpt could also represent, though I apologize in advance to instrument enthusiasts who can probably tell them apart better than I can. This figure could be carrying the Uncommon Dos Loot, the Uncommon Fashlukun Bandalore, the Uncommon Make Fermid Citern, or the Rare Kenneth Mandolin. I don't know, they all sound pretty delicious to me. The Barbarian as a playable class is different from Barbarians as a group in D&D, which typically refers to specific nomadic humans. However, the lore behind the Barbarian class has them hailing from wild areas, so they could have come from those Barbarian tribes as their background. So you could use this figure as a Raygad Barbarian from Icewind Dale. They feature prominently in Storm King's Thunder and presumably in Icewind Dale Rime of the Frost Maiden. The design is also reminiscent of the Human Barbarian mini from the Tyranny of Dragons set. These tiefling sorcerer sculpts have some interesting details that could work well for specific sorcerer subclasses. The one with the open shirt, for example, isn't exactly well armored, but that's okay if he's a draconic bloodline sorcerer who gets an AC of 13 plus his dexterity modifier when he's not wearing armor. The other sculpt shows a figure launching into the air, which would be thematic for a storm sorcery sorcerer. A subclass added in Xanathar's Guide to Everything who can use a bonus action to fly on a gust of air after casting a spell of first level or higher. You've got some big translucent spell effects going on with these tiefling sorcerer sculpts. The spell effect is removable from both of these minis if you don't like it or if you just want it to be easier to paint. Like the elf sorcerer sculpts we looked at earlier, you could paint these any color you want, but the smoky render provided by WizKids calls to mind the shadow magic subclass added in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. At third level, the sorcerer gets a darkness spell, and the inky smoke spreading from the sorcerer here could be a dramatic rendition of that. Or, you know, maybe she's just barbecuing. 
At 14th level, she can teleport between areas of dim light or darkness, appearing to step out of the shadows, like, like, like a sneaky server at a nice Italian restaurant. The human paladin figure is heavily armored and would also work for a fighter class. The one with the shield could also work as a cleric since the cloth obscures the armor enough that you could justify it as medium instead of heavy. Apart from a border, the shield is flat with no pre-existing design, so you could paint a holy symbol or the symbol of whichever god your paladin worships on it. Alternatively, you could use these figures as soldiers or commanders in an army. This elf wizard is a great mini for a wizard focusing on the school of evocation, which is all about channeling elemental magic. The first spell effect could represent a spell like Ice Knife, while the crackling electricity with a second mini could be the start of a lightning bolt spell. It's worth noting that the scepter on the first sculpt is transparent, though the WizKids render shows it painted as a wooden scepter. This gives you the option of transforming the scepter into a second spell effect or some magical or spiritual weapon. The naming of this set as Orc Adventurers suggests it's intended as a playable set, and orcs are finally getting their love as a playable race. You've got one sculpt for martial classes and another for spellcasting. Orcs have been playable since Volo's Guide to Monsters, and an alternative racial option was added in Critical Role's Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. However, a number of races designated as quote-unquote monstrous were given negative ability scores, with orcs getting plus two to strength and a plus one to constitution, but a minus two to intelligence. This made them unpopular to play, but with the upcoming Tasha's Cauldron of Everything removing negative scores from all races, we may be looking at a monster renaissance among playable characters soon, making this pack quite timely. Again, these figures are available now. Each has an MSRP of $4.99. In our last Nolders video, which you can see in the eye in the corner of your screen there, I gave you some strategies on painting those translucent bits very quickly and easily. And in the comments section, we had several other great suggestions from some of our other viewers. So if you're on the fence about painting these or you're worried about how to do those little bits, go watch that video because it really couldn't be easier. Now, I apparently need to go get some lunch. But first, many thanks to WizKids for sending us these minis to review and to our sponsor for this video, The Deck of Mini. Their Hecna Cosmic Carnival Horror Campaign setting for 5th edition is coming to Kickstarter on September 8th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Hecna is a campaign setting for 5e that's centered on a carnival called the Revelia, overseen by the titular Hecna, a ringleader who loves nothing more than to fright and delight carnival goers. The book will feature everything you need to run a campaign centered around this super creepy carnival. Visit Hecna.com to sign up to be notified when it launches, and when it does, we can all talk about it over there in their Kickstarter comment section. Thank you for watching today. Clicking the little thumbs up button, sharing our videos with your friends, and subscribing to the channel helps us continue to grow and make new videos. We'll be reviewing the last half of the Nolzers minis very soon. If we've already released it by now, you can see it by clicking that eye in the corner of your screen, of course. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to join the discussion. I hope you're staying safe out there and having fun. I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. <laughs>